Thank you. All right. Thank you, Terminator. Well, welcome everyone to our very first road meeting at Love and Light. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Love and Light Spiritual Emporium is our brick and mortar store, the official brick and mortar store of the Grove. That's my commercial. Now, here's our presentation. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to be discussing um, Earth magic. This is the first in a four part. Uh, a four part discussion on all the elements and the environmental as well as the magical impact of each element. So we're going to study the physical and the metaphysical of the element of earth tonight. So the soil beneath your feet and that grand old oak out in your backyard and the community garden full of blossoms are all sources of earth magic. The earth provides us with stability, comfort, and strength. So those are some of the correspondences of the elements of earth. It is our mother and that from which all life streams. So it connotes life, growth, and fruit and fruitfulness. Without the earth, we would cease to exist. So the earth magic surrounds us every day of our lives. Trying to make space to let in earth energy into our days will enrich our connection to nature, bringing balance and powerful energy to our practice. When you go for a walk around the block, be present while you're walking, taking note of the small things. Notice all the subtle signs of life around you. If you buy a new house plant, it will be your plant friend and treat it as such. See it as a guest in your home one that you're going to put in a place that's comfortable for them and feed and water them accordingly. That can be a magical experience in itself. Collect rocks from the forest and sand from the beach and then utilize them in your magical practice. There are tons of ways to include the earth element into your everyday magical routine. This is the territory of the hedge witch, using herbs and crystals in their magic. That soil under our feet is the embodiment of life, death, and rebirth. It is made up of the many generations of life which came before us. We are made up of the same minerals. It is packed with magical potential. Let's consider some other correspondences of Earth. We say the Earth is in the North. And that is because we are in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> it holds receptive magic which means it is feminine and spiritual, just like our mother Gaia. Each earth energy can be used for meditation, enhancing psychic abilities, personal development, and compassion. It's the passion and grounding that associates the element of earth to the root chakra. It is our foundation. The earth is most exposed in the winter time, and much of it comes alive in the night, especially the cave dwellers and ground burrowers that have a direct connection to the earth darkness and silence, slumber and rejuvenation are all hiding down in the earth with the gopher 
and the rabbit. The goddess Artemis. Embodying the lure of the forest. Stands for the earth along with the wolf, the bear, and the stag. The sense of touch is another correspondence of earth, which may be why we just can't resist picking up that rock. As you can see, I have picked up quite a few and taken them branch. home with me. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone now come up and choose a rock to hold during our meditation. Look at them all. Pick the one that uh, speaks to you, hopefully you. one that you know what it is, because I don't know the names. I just know it's the purple rock that makes me feel happy, or the red rock that makes me feel energy. Rowdy. Rowdy. <laughs> Very good word. <laughs> or raunchy. Raunchy. Ah, a couple of weeks too early for that. <laughs> I was just trying to find words. This is true. <laughs> and then I thought of, you know who. Ah, nice. Nice. Yes. Him. Jake? Or Emily? No, that's not uh, that's, that's That could be changed. Or some sort of agate. Is it agate or agate? I don't know. Agate. Okay. Very good. So, the sense of touch will transmit the stone's unique brand of strength. If the stone is an amethyst, you may get a sense of relief as it disperses negative energy. Opalite can add a boost of self-confidence to your day, but it all boils down to strength, like a rock. Let's take a moment to get to know the rock we have chosen. Put your feet flat on the floor. Hold your rock to your chest. Carl is going to play the singing book. So Carl will sound the healing bowl. It has a very deep vibration. Feel free to hum along as you feel the resonance of the bowl and the stone in your hand. If the sound uh, cuts off because of the bowl at home, uh, it will return. Just hum to yourself till we're back, okay? We're going to start now.
anybody have any experience you'd like to share? Intense. Overrating to my core. Mm -hmm. Saying just Peace. in one word. Calm. I control that such a deep vibration of the whole all the town. Like a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to buy a truck. <laughs> okay, you can put your rock back or you can hold it, whichever you want. There are certain plants that connote the earth energies, such as oak moss, fern, ivy, patchouli, hawthorn, mandrake, wormwood, vervain, cypress and those that produce nuts and grains. When we describe the smell or taste of these plants, we will use the term earthy. Mushrooms definitely are earthy in taste. It can be an acquired taste. <laughs> the, the best part of sampling um, truffle goat cheese in the grocery store is to see the reactions that you get from different customers. Always hand them a napkin with it because they're either going to ask for another piece or they're going to spit it out in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like dirt, but some good people dirt. think that that's very good dirt. What's wrong with a little dirt? <laughs> Kills eat dirt all the time. That's right. So as mentioned, our mother Gaia is the embodiment of the earth and therefore an integral part of our earth magic. Of course, we don't want to forget Lunas. So Lunas is the male energy of nature and we need that balance. Absolutely. Um, there are many earth goddesses. I have pictures of two here. This is Demeter. Very Greek looking. Yeah. And her Roman counterpart, you'll see. Ah, right over here. <clears throat> this is Ceres. You can tell that is the Roman version. Well, we get the word cereal incidentally. Yes, cereal comes from Ceres. Because these are the goddesses that taught mankind how to harvest in the Greek and Roman pantheon. There's many others in every Every pantheon has a god or goddess that taught us how to cultivate the land. Anybody have any? Sith. Sith. And prayer. And prayer. So every tradition has their own version of that goddess that um, taught us how to feed ourselves. So people will. People were very pathetic at one time yeah. <laughs> and needed to learn all these things. <laughs> so remember these gods and goddesses of the grain um, can come in handy when we're doing earth magic spells. We can call on them for their brand of magic. Now, earth magic utilizes two main techniques burying and transporting. Now you may bury things in the earth for the purpose of cleansing an item of negative vibrations. Garden soil is actually less harsh than salt. So maybe there are um, pieces in your magical toolkit that could benefit from an earth bath. And you could um, leave them buried in a little plate of soil overnight. This would not harm anything that came from the earth. Anything with stone on it would be very happy in there. Um, 
you are probably familiar with pre the practice of banishing by burying to get rid of something completely. Um, and of course, planting seeds for future growth or blessing an item by planting. All these steps can be used literally as in actually burying something or figuratively where you write something on a piece of paper and bury the paper. Either way, you are cleansing, ridding, or planting when you use the um, burial side of earth magic. Now, transporting, that's very interesting. We transport basically anytime we use earth in a spell that does not take place directly upon the soil or at the origin of the soil or include the burial of an item. Okay, so for example, if a loved one tracked dirt into your home, and you swept it up and put it away for later to use in a healing spell. That would be transporting. Now, why would you use that soil in that way? Can you think of any reason? Because it was transported by, by your loved one. Yeah, those are some key words Thus, there. Contact with such. And what That's were they the doing in the yard? They were probably like walking barefoot or they were earthing, yes. grounding. They were grounding. They could have been tilling the soil, you know, planting fruits and vegetables for your table, mowing the lawn, and improving the curb appeal, you know, whatever. So instead of getting mad, you say, oh, excellent. <laughs> and remember that house plant friend? Wouldn't they like some of that soil? That would be, that's just like feeding your cat indoor cat formula. Uh, food, right? Because they don't get to go outside and enjoy these things in nature. So if some dirt comes in the house from something you're doing outside, sweep it up and put it in a house plant. Okay? This is a little bit of uh, earth magic for you. Enjoy. Enjoy. Okay. So you may transport the elements of earth by placing soil in a charm bag or in your home, using a mud mask in your bath ritual would be earth magic, transporting earth magic. Um, or even, like we said, growing house plants. Uh, you could place a pile of dirt on your altar to hold up the candle. It's not holding it up very well, <laughs> but I think you need it's a little, well, it's all right. It's, you need a little <laughs> moisture dirt. I tried to put some water on it. The um, planting, the potting soil wasn't good, but actual dirt, some moist dirt. Are you okay? <coughs> yeah. All right. Um, would hold that up. Now, a lot of practitioners demand an immaculate altar, but the <laughs> earth witch knows the power of dirt and uses that power. They might have a mound of dirt with candles and incense and everything stuck in that dirt. Really cool. So where this dirt comes from um, conveys intention. So be my, <laughs> mindful of what happened or is happening at the site of where you took the dirt. So far, we've just spoken about our own backyards and um, our neighborhoods, but in different traditions, they take dirt from different places. In voodoo, graveyard dirt is taken from the grave of a person who has lived a life in line with the spell's intent. It must be paid for by leaving a coin or other item of value on the grave. Now, dirt from the grave of a murderer might be used if the intention was to curse an enemy. And a voodoo practitioner would have no problem with this practice. As an eclectic witch, we can draw from the same principle, but take dirt from a loved one's grave to use in our ancestor worship. And what do we always do when we visit a grave? We bring flowers, right? That's a very good exchange because 
Even if you don't <coughs> deliberately collect dirt from a grave, it may come home with you on those shoes. I think everybody here after tonight going to invest in some shoe covers wherever you go, <laughs> because that that dirt transport it's transported dirt mm -hmm. can have very magical uh, things. Dirt from a crossroads is considered sacred in almost all magical traditions. It is <coughs> believed to be lo loaded with supernatural powers. It is used for protection, blessing, banishing, domination, virtually any purpose. It is thought to be neutral, coming from a point where all directions meet. So one has only to direct it according to one's wishes. In Santeria, they incorporate the magical qualities of dirt in some of these following ways. Dirt from the area around a bank is thought to hold prosperity within it. Dirt from the area around a courthouse is used to gain victory in legal disputes. Dirt from the area around a library is used to increase one's knowledge and wisdom. And racetrack dirt is used in gambling spells to increase luck. And dirt from the bottom of someone's shoes is said to allow one to dominate or cause harm to the owner of the shoes. This whole thing sounds very Strega too. And I could, <laughs> I could see some old Italian ladies. In fact, they won't leave their hair or no, anywhere. No, 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 no hair. It's, it's any. fun here. Um, example. They would rather burn their hair or flush their nail clippings than leave it anywhere in, say, trash. <coughs> Absolutely. So whether either one of these techniques, either burying or transporting, both hold the full power of earth, even when the soil is used in small amounts. Spells utilizing earth energies can bring about money, prosperity, abundance, confidence, career success, grounding, stability, and fertility. So doesn't this make us want to live more sustainably? And now let's talk about how we can keep this earth under our feet for many, many generations to come. And homework, if you haven't read it, read this, read this book, Braiding Sweetgrass. Oh, what a great book this is. In her book, Braiding Sweetgrass, Robin Wall Kimmerer speaks again and again of our need to show this planet reciprocity. Drawing on her life as an indigenous scientist and as a woman, Kimmerer shows how other living beings, asters and goldenrod, strawberries and squash, salamanders, algae, and sweetgrass offer us gifts and lessons, even if we've forgotten how to hear their voices. In reflections that range from the creation of Turtle Island to the forces that threatened its flourishing today, she circles towards a central argument that the awakening of ecological consciousness requires the acknowledgement and celebration of our reciprocal relationship with the rest of the living world. For only when we can hear the languages of other beings will we be capable of understanding the generosity of the earth and learn to give our own gifts in return. In her Sweetgrass experiment, she convinced her university 
that one of her students should be able to do this experiment as their thesis paper. They planted three plots of sweet grass. One they totally left alone. The other one they harvested, but they ripped out every third plant by the roots. The third one, they very carefully harvested a third of every plant. Now her money was on harvesting carefully a third of every plant because that was how she was raised. And she used to go to big festivals and other people would talk about doing it differently. And, you know, there was like some animosity. Oh, that's not the way we do it. You know, that's the Guess what the results was? Left alone. And it the one that was left alone choked itself out and died. And the other two flourished because they were harvested, <coughs> because there was a give and take, a compassionate, responsible give and take between the earth and the people. <laughs> If you rip up every third plant, it stimulates the roots to send more nutrients to the other plants. If you cut a third of the plant, it stimulates the stalks to take more nutrients from the earth. So those two plots flourished, and the one that was left without human care choked itself out and died. Now, in its own given time, it would have probably half of it died and the rest would have flourished. But you can see that people don't have to destroy the earth in order to use it. You know, we're talking about responsible, sustainable harvesting and farming here. And that's what we should be voting for with our grocery money. We can do that and buy locally from people who raise the fruits and vegetables right here among us. That's a great way to show our uh, care for the earth. Um, during Dragonfly's talk about natural gardening, you made a, you gave a thing about your husband. Uh, just we're, we're just planting our our. Um, vegetable waste. Right. Yes. And I have, right now I have three tomato plants and about four pepper plants. And peppers are about to fruit. Tomatoes haven't yet flowered, but you know, and this is like the fourth time. Yeah. It's like amazing. And we tried, I mean, I was successful with gardening up north, but since we moved here, we vegetable gardening, Florida's hard. We really had no success. We did not, all we did was plant our garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and we have more vegetables growing now than. See that? Plant your garbage. Just save those, you know, whatever, the ends of the onions, the whatever, right? The seeds from the pepper yeah, plants. Like, it's like seeds mulching or whatever, plants. they use like manure or trash, and they take the recycle. It's supposed to be worth it that they actually use the trash. Compost. 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 I tried composting a couple of times. The big composters, we don't, that's too big for us. I did the worm forms. And I, like I said, my worms, I had to bathe them a couple of times. They don't like being bathed. <laughs> <laughs> but they, eventually, you know, the worms escaped. Right. And, or the frogs came and ate them. I don't know. But, um, you know, so that was not that was a bust right this just direct garbage directly just in the ground planted. it composts itself right so you, you don't have to get anything fancy um i think if you if you have a milk carton you know one of those old-fashioned milk cartons you can just keep that on the sink or under the sink and just throw all that in there and then take it out and bury it in the yard i have um, a berry basket that I keep it in the refrigerator until it's full. Right. <laughs> so depends it depends how, how much uh, food waste you have. You know, you're talking about meals. 
And if you want to start out slow, um, you know, sometimes we make these big New Year's resolutions where I'm going to save everything and I'm going to do this and that. We end up doing <laughs> nothing, right? So, like, say you make a pot of coffee in the morning. Throw those grounds outside under a bush. Um, when you when you crack your eggs, put the shells back in the container. Yes, can you? I was going to say also, if you go to Starbucks, they usually have on their shelves old um, coffee grounds that you can just take for free. And really? Use compost. I didn't know. That's oh, awesome. That's... I've done that two times. That is that's cool. Bizarre. They have it wrapped up in like their like foil or whatever they mm -hmm. do that it comes in and it says take the compost. Oh, all right. That's great. Right. Good thing. I didn't realize Starbucks actually started doing that. That's pretty yeah, cool. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, a lot of plants, yeah, yeah. Uh, my gardenia plant likes coffee grounds and those eggshells. Mm -hmm. You just put them back in the container and so that they stay in the refrigerator until you finish the whole dozen and then crunch them up and just put them, you know, just dig dig a little bit right and put them. The powder. Right. Mm -hmm. Now you want some magical powder. You can just grind. You can, you got to clean the membranes right. out. You yeah. got to dry it out and you can grind and you've got nice white cascarilla, cascarilla. <laughs> <laughs> which is another form of earth magic, yes, I would indeed. imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, there's lots of things that we can do and just do it a little. And your, your garden is not going to, you know, Survive say, hey, they listen, hey, I know you peeled potatoes last night, buddy. Where's my peels? You know, the garden's not going to say that. They're I just definitely listening. don't peel my potatoes. I <laughs> the whole thing. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That's okay. That's well, it. The garden, garden doesn't mind. The garden wants you to use well, every single device. bit. That's unless you're a tree. Then your trees will start saying things like that to you. Yes, you your tree might say, I know, I know you had a potato last night. I know you didn't eat all that peel. Where's my potato? <laughs> You know, like with my gardens, with the okra leaves that fall off, or the bot when I pull out the uh, salad greens, there's always some on the bottom that are like yucky. Mm -hmm. And I just cut them all off and I just dig a little hole right there with all the other plants and I just give all that back. Right. And that feeds the soil. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Yes. So we're going to be gleaning the fields in um, Bell Glade March. in March. And everybody needs to register if you haven't, if you're going to get I to registered, go. but like Jen, uh, like Moss said, there was that date, that date open. Okay. So what I think we did was fill all their spots, mm -hmm. which is fine. We're all going to go anyway. We could take turns gleaning. We could, um, it's only two hours, right? So then... Birch has a garden, a, a park that she wants to show us. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a picnic in the park and a ritual to Lady Florida afterwards to thank her for that bounty. So if more people signed up than needed, that's great. Once we get up there, you know, there's always people that register and then don't show. So they say, might be happy to see a few more of us up there. Yeah, I was going to say, can I register even? I'm not sure if I can do it yet. Register, because the registering gets you, you other times on their right. books. Right. Okay. And then Basically. you can sign up for any of those events. That Basically, they, have. They, they know that you registered. You can sign up for any other event that you want. Okay. I, I think they have a ticket system. It's like if you don't show up X amount of times, they'll probably deregister you. Right. Because... To register without doing anything. Yeah. Well, we will, you know, from time to time, we'll be doing that. So once we're, if we're all registered, then we can go anytime we want. And I will, once we get a head count, if you know, once you know you're really going to go, let me know so then I can email the lady in charge and tell her that so many of us are coming and I am going. You are going. And we will, we will be there to do whatever they need to do. Now, the reason why that we can glean the fields is because Roth Farms uses, like any other factory farm, uses big um, machines to harvest their crop. I think we're going to be uh, lettuce. I think it's going to be lettuce. Um, so they go through, they pass, and then everything that's left that the, the big trucks don't get just lays on the ground. So 
that would be tilled under for the next harvest season, which is good for the earth, but there's enough of it that this society um, has arranged for us to come in and pick some of the better heads that are still left on the ground, and then they're going to take them to the food bank. So I think that's a wonderful way to give back to the earth and to people. That is fantastic. Don't be in such a hurry to mow your lawn. Carl, Carl and I are never in a hurry to mow the lawn. We used to get letters all the time from the homeowners. Association. Oh, God. <laughs> now they're not, now, now they've become a little more lax, but this will give the bees a meal, you know, to let it flower. See that Florida snow before you mow the lawn. Nothing wrong with that. And don't be so hard on the weeds in your yard. If it's green, mow it. Because that's what feeds the, the bees, you know? And I don't know. I'd rather see a natural lawn than a manicured lawn. I think a manicured lawn is kind of a waste of uh, yeah, golf course. <laughs> just put some master turf. Yeah, right. Exactly. For that. A manicured lawn is a waste. Of of space. What? It's a waste of all that <laughs> resources. Yeah. You, here's the funny thing. We have thing. seven different flowers that pop up in our yard. I know someone that has gotten in trouble with their city because they have a garden. Yeah. I mean, in like the front a full the... on yeah. garden. They're growing corn, they're growing weeds, they're growing <laughs> food. But they're growing weed, they need a license. Weed. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. <laughs> yeah. The other blue, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. Well, that's yeah, you don't grow the weed on your... That's why I don't like it. That's the best thing is to plant something. If you have room, plant the tree. Right, Birch? Always plant, plant a tree. Always plant a tree. Mm -hmm. When an elk plant another tree. If you have patience, plant food. <laughs> I like the trend of the um, ornamental food yeah, plants peppers you know and yeah peppers and things Cal, I love it. and those those plants that produce food they flower they're beautiful mm -hmm. they're green they can hedge they you know everything right well and what's even better you can plant the trees that grow fruit and then they'll provide shade for the lower ground covering plants yes. below so they can survive better in the florida heat absolutely that's great. We have uh, we have several different kinds of trees, uh, fruiting trees in our backyard, but they're not for us. They're for the birds. We have elderberries, beauty berries, um, Florida coffee, and uh, because of that, we have a family of blue jays, cardinals, and brown thrashers that are regulars in our yard. And that little rainbow bird that's been showing up. We got a new little rainbow bird, all different colors. Yeah. You need to take a picture of that. Take a picture of that. Oh, so, any other suggestions on how to give back to the earth? Have an herb garden. And, and herbs actually do not mind being grown indoors. So you can have it on a shelf, per se. Just give it water, give it space. Lots of love and songs and strokings. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you have pressure. It's your plant your friend. Food. Treat it like a guest in your home. Turn a large part of your yard into a food forest. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, and then every time you harvest from your garden, always make sure to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Always. Tell it why you're taking and what you're doing and what your need is. Thank it. Give it some energy. Give it some, you know, little magic back. Mm -hmm. And it makes it more of a relationship than like us taking always from the plants because plants are giving us something. We need to give stuff back to them. Mm -hmm. That's, like to that's a like big theme that's going to gonna come up in the latest Florida ritual. <laughs> Not giving them love, it's intimidating. Though. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Mind you, I mm -hmm. Anybody the on the line have anything to add? First, to talk to that tree. Chats? No, no chats. I was just gonna, I was just saying that 
Yes. Um, you were talking about the, the birds in your bird feeder and I've had the blue jays and the cardinals and I'm in upstate New York and I've had these flocks of these birds and you said brown thrasher and I totally just looked it up online and I totally just showed my husband and I'm like that's what we have in our yard there you go lots of them (laughs) everywhere they're everywhere there's like tons of them so thank you and for everything else too and hi everyone (laughs) hi so they spend half the year in in our backyard (laughs) and then they come the the other half of the year they come over and feed in my backyard that's fantastic all right so now we are going to have our magical working for the evening Magical working starting. Magical working. Now, we're going to plant some beans, magic beans, in the form of a ritual spell. This rite will set in motion a new beginning that you would like in your life. Can anybody here think of a new (laughs) beginning that they might want in their life? And it could be anything that pertains to earth correspondences, strength, prosperity, abundance, confidence, stability in a new career, endeavor, or relationship. Everybody's got something in their mind right now. So step up to a pot. Okay. So gather all your components together and place them in front of you. Make sure you have a pot of soil, three seeds, a little stick, a little bit of water, and you're good. Everybody got that? I ate the popsicles. All right. Now give these components your full attention. Close your eyes and imagine that you are surrounded by light. You are right in the middle of a big ball of energy that extends out in all directions, left, right, forward, back, above, and below. Embrace your components by encircling them with your arms. Just bring your arms like you're hugging them. Speak your intention to them out loud or in your heart. Taking deep, even breaths, share the light you have collected with yourself and the components until all the light is transported and filling you and your components. Take a deep breath in, absorb the light, out, share it with the soil. In, absorb the light, out, share it with the seeds. In, absorb the light, out, share it with the water. So all the light is contained within yourself and your components. Using your craft stick, open three slits in the soil and plant each seed separately a few inches from the top. Three separate little holes for three separate little seeds. Pat the soil gently 
to embed the seeds. Apply that little bit of water. You'll be able to pour water on it when you get home. Insert your craft stick into the center to act as a little trellis for the coming new sprouts and their tendrils. Pick up your song sheet. We are going to sing, because gardens love you to sing to them. You're going to sing a song to bless these seeds. Ready? Mm -hmm. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. Gonna mulch it deep and low, gonna make it fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, God has blessed these seeds I sow. God has keep them safe below till the rain comes tumbling down. Pulling weeds and picking stones, we are made of dreams and bones. Need a spot to call my own, cause the time is close at hand. Rain for rain, sun and rain, I'll find my way in nature's chain. To my body and my brain, to the music of the land. Plant your rows straight and long, season them with prayer and song. Mother Earth will keep you strong if you give her love and care. Old crow watching from a tree has his hungry eyes on me. In my garden, my mess free as that feathered thief up there. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. Gonna mulch it deep and low, gonna make it fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, God has blessed these seeds I sow. God is keep them safe below till the rain comes tumbling down. So take your new plant friend home and encourage this new growth with sunlight and water, prayer and song. And when you see sprouts, you may plant the whole thing in a bigger pot with more soil and create a more substantial trellis using a bigger stick. So mote it be. So mote it be. So now we have blended the physical and the metaphysical using the element of earth. Take what you will back to your practice and lifestyle. Show our mother Gaia the respect she deserves. May she spin in abundance for many generations to come. Thank you and stay crafty. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Any comments online? Um, wonderful to hear all these ideals. Thanks, by Kimberly. You're welcome, Kimberly. Thank you. So everyone, can unmute, and if you have anything to say or join in, please do. That was amazing. <laughs> I loved it. That was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. I love the music. I love the song. You guys were great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're going out on the road. We're going to do it. Partridge family. That was wonderful. That was so fun. <laughs> Where can we get the song? I was just about that. Is it online? Is the song online? Will be. That is a Pete. That's a Pete Seeger song. Are you talking about the song? 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's oh, an I old I recognized it. song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you oh, can, okay. you Thank can you. just Google it. It's the garden song. It's called the garden. Oh, oh I recognize it now. Yeah, and uh, oh. I mean, Arlo Guthrie has done it. Peter Paul and Mary. I mean, everybody. Yeah. The Muppet, John Denver did it on the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> the Muppets did it. John Denver did it. And John Denver on the Muppets did it. Okay. I mean, that's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> it's all about to grow. Okay. Let's go first circle. Yeah. And then we can chat for a while. Okay. Stop the recording. Okay.